auscultatory areas of the cardiovascular system and its clinical significance. Auscultation of heart sounds is the cornerstone of the cardiovascular system examination. It is usually done with the assistance of a stethoscope. Stethoscopes have two areas, the bell and the diaphragm. The bell should be applied lightly to the skin and is used in identifying low-pitched sounds such as gallops, murmurs of AV stenosis and brutes. The diaphragm should be pressed tightly against the skin and helps identify high-pitched sounds such as valve closures, regurgitant murmurs, and systolic clicks. The examiner should perform auscultation in four positions, supine, left lateral decubitus, upright, and upright leaning, forward listening, to all cardiac areas. It should start with supine position, with the torso elevated to 45 degrees. The anatomical position of heart valves, relative to the chest wall, will dictate the optimal position for auscultation. The valves are best located as follows. Aortic valve, at the second intercostal space, right sternal border. Pulmonic valve, at the second intercostal space, left sternal border. Tricuspid valve, at the left lower sternal border. Mitral valve, at the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, cardiac apex. Herbs area, second aortic area, at the third, left intercostal space, close to the sternum. Gibson's area, at the left first intercostal space, close to the sternum. Aortic area, corresponds to the second, right intercostal space, close to the sternum. Murmurs here, are suggestive of aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation and coarctation of the aorta. Pulmonary area, corresponds to the second, left intercostal space, close to the sternum. Murmurs noted here, are suggestive of pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary regurgitation and atrial septal defect. Tricuspid area, corresponds to the, lower left parasternal area. Murmurs noted, here are suggestive of tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation and ventricular septal defects. Mitral area, corresponds to, cardiac apex. Murmurs here, represent mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation and mitral valve prolapse. Herbs area, also called, the second aortic area. Diastolic murmurs, heard in this region could be suggestive of, aortic regurgitation and pulmonic regurgitation. Systolic murmurs, heard here are suggestive of, hypertrophic, obstructive cardiomyopathy. Gibson's area, corresponds to the, left first intercostal space, close to sternum. Patent ductus, arteriosus murmur, is best heard here. It is also called Gibson's murmur. Other areas of auscultation are, auscultate the carotid arteries using the diaphragm of the stethoscope while the patient holds their breath to listen for radiation of an ejection systolic murmur caused by aortic stenosis. Roll the patient onto their left side and listen over the mitral area with the diaphragm of the stethoscope during expiration to listen for a pansystolic murmur caused by mitral regurgitation. Continue to auscultate into the axilla to identify the radiation of this murmur. Auscultation of the supra and infraclavicular areas lead us to diagnosis of various chest diseases. Accentuating maneuvers Sit the patient forwards and auscultate over the aortic area with the diaphragm of the stethoscope during expiration to listen for an early diastolic murmur caused by aortic regurgitation. With the patient on their left side, listen over the mitral area using the bell of the stethoscope during expiration for a mid-diastolic murmur caused by mitral stenosis. More details to follow in upcoming videos on cardiac maneuvers. To get more such high-yield medical content, don't forget to subscribe. Basidia Med. The easiest and fastest way to take advanced clinical history.